Muchísimo gusto tenerlo aquí en el programa, vamos a estar platicando con él acerca de su trabajo, que tiene una trayectoria realmente increíble y asombrosa. Bienvenido, welcome. Thank you. <risa> Quiero que me platique eh, acerca de los descubrimientos y proyectos que consideran más significativos durante su mandato como ministro de Turismo y Antigüedades. Uh, I enjoyed working, serving the Egyptian heritage as Minister of Tourism and Antiquities for almost six and a half years. And it was a very active uh, period. We were able to open and to innovate more than 20 museums in Egypt. And we organized big cultural events. I'm um, very, very proud of two of them. The Golden Mummies Parade, when we moved 22 mummies from the old iconic Egyptian museum in Cairo to the new uh, Egyptian Museum of Civilization, the 3rd of April, 2021. And it had a huge impact to raise awareness among the Egyptians and to bring more tourists to Egypt. The second cultural event that I'm very proud of is the Sphinx Avenue, when the Egyptian government uh, opened a restoration project of the Sphinx Avenue, connecting the very famous temples of Karnak and uh, Luxor Temple on the east bank of Luxor. We made uh, more than 50 restoration projects uh, everywhere in Egypt. I'm exceptionally uh, proud of one day. It was 10th of January, 2020, when we opened at noon the restoration project of a mosque. Then we went to Alexandria to visit the restoration project of the Cathedral of St. Mark. Then, in the same day, we opened the restoration project of the synagogue Eliyahu Hanavi in Alexandria. Cultural diversity is something that I'm very proud of and that's something that the whole world needs today. We had uh, very important archaeological discoveries uh, in many World Heritage sites and I think the most famous ones were uh, in Saqqara, part of the Memphis necropolis, and in Luxor. Ha trabajado con instituciones internacionales en la repatriación de objetos culturales egipcios. ¿Cómo fue todo este proceso y obviamente el significado que ha sido para Egipto? Uh, during uh, my term as minister, uh, Egypt repatriated more than 7,000 artifacts from more than 20 countries. Uh, we are working uh, in bilateral level with different countries and globally according to the UNESCO Convention of 1970. Uh, and I'm very grateful to all the countries who respected the international law and UNESCO Convention. And with their support and with the political negotiation, we were able, able to repatriate artifacts who left Egypt in an illegal way. Durante muchos años ha sido usted docente y ha tenido la oportunidad, eh, por supuesto, de tener a muchos alumnos. ¿Qué cambios ha notado en, en las nuevas generaciones y los intereses, obviamente, que tienen hoy en día por, por, este, por la egiptología? I enjoyed uh, teaching since uh, I started my career. I started as assistant, uh, teaching the Faculty of Tourism to the future tour guides of Egypt. I was teaching Egyptian civilization, heritage, museums, and uh, throughout my career, I love teaching. I uh, taught mainly in Egypt, but uh, I lectured in more than 15 countries and mainly in uh, Montpellier University, from which I got my uh, PhD uh, in 2001. And I was invited as visiting professor many times in this prestigious university of University Paul Valéry. Uh, I think that uh, I can observe two things uh, in education. The first one is uh, the disparity in education between the different parts of the world. And this is something that we have to work on, and UNESCO have to continue 
uh, working in uh, reducing this divide and this disparity between education in all world. Education is a fundamental human right. And now while we are talking, we have more than 250 million children out of school. And I think a higher number who doesn't get a quality education. So I think that we have to work all together to implement the SDG number four of quality education for all and uh, lifelong learning. And this is something very important. So this is the first concern. The second uh, observation is regarding the use of technology. Mm -hmm. And in the future, with the, the appearance of AI and new technologies, uh, I think that the whole world now has to work seriously on education after 2030. How we can get the good side of AI, of modern technology, to enhance the quality of education, of inclusive education, for girls' education, and education related to the needs of the different countries on the earth. Ahorita que habla de la tecnología, eh, obviamente se han creado mucho las visitas virtuales a los museos y demás. ¿Qué piensa él de estas visitas y que no se pierda esa esencia de que puedan visitar obviamente también lo, el museo este, físicamente? ¿no? Today in the archaeology world and museums world, we cannot work without the advanced technology. We use the technology in the archaeological mission to do the excavation, the documentation of artifacts, to enhance the experience of visitors in museums, in archaeological sites. Uh, and we have to continue to work using the latest technology uh, in this field. Uh, now, people, especially young people and young, young audience, are connected to their iPad and to their mobile. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to address them uh, in an attractive way to teach them this heritage and this cultural diversity through the language they will understand. It's only about technology. And this is something that we worked on uh, during the last few years in Egypt, especially in the new museums, using the latest technology in the Grand Egyptian Museum and the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization to attract people uh, through a uh, digital platform or even uh, virtual reality and immersive visits uh, and immersive experience inside the new museums. Ahora, ¿qué legado quiere él dejar a través de la egiptología, tanto a los profesionales como al público en general? This is what I taught uh, all my life uh, to my students, how to explain the sites, uh, how to do a proper site management and museum management uh, as well. I do believe in the power of culture to bring people together and to establish peace on earth. And this is the mandate of UNESCO. When it was established in the 40s of last century, it was to establish peace and to bring people together through education, science, and culture. I believe in the power of culture to bring people uh, together and to establish peace on earth. Mm -hmm. So people, especially the young audience, have to be aware of their history. Uh, and when I say there, it's the humanity history. And this is something that I worked on uh, during my term as minister, when I tried to give free access to, ch to the children to visit archaeological sites, to make the museums accessible and to connect the audience with archaeological sites and museums, this is very important. Ahora, ¿cuál ha sido eh, el, la, la situación más difícil que tuvo él en el poder tener la protección del patrimonio egipcio? Among the very important decisions that uh, we took to preserve Egyptian heritage was the amendment of the Egyptian law of antiquity twice in 2018 and 2020 to assure more preservation and more protection to uh, Egyptian uh, heritage sites. And uh, we had a very big challenge is to uh, have the enough resources and funds to do all our projects. We have more than 2,000 archaeological sites uh, in Egypt that we have to restore, to protect, to do site management projects, to build enclosure wall, uh, security systems. It needs a huge budget. 
uh, and I'm very, very proud of the partnership that we established for the first time with the private sector. And we did a lot of fundraising to bring the private sector with us to be able to support in the huge and unique asset that we had. It's the Egyptian heritage. Ahora, ¿qué consejo les daría a los jóvenes que se quieren dedicar, obviamente, a, a cuidar todo lo que es el patrimonio egipcio? ¿Qué consejo les puede dar? I think that every uh, young person, young girl, every one on earth should protect uh, his heritage. And by protecting the heritage of each and every country, we are protecting and preserving the humanity heritage for the next generations. I keep in mind the image of the Egyptian youth surrounding the Egyptian Museum in Cairo during the revolution of 2011, when some people attacked the museum. It was protected by the local community and the youth people who were surrounding the museum to protect it. This is something that we really uh, loved and that's why I was very keen to work a lot of local communities to, ring, to raise awareness among the local communities about their heritage and history. Le ha tocado a él vivir, o oh, bueno, a todos nos ha tocado vivir, pero a él en el tema de, de cuando fue ministro, pues obviamente en la, en la de COVID-19 y la guerra de Ucrania. ¿Cómo fue eh, enfrentar esto para que obviamente el turismo eh, tuviera, eh, no tuviera ninguna repercusión o sacar a los turistas a flote sin ningún problema de, de Egipto? I was added the tourism to the Ministry of Antiquity end of December 2019. So almost with the beginning of appearance of COVID. So three months later, we closed all Egyptian destinations and the airports, hotels, restaurants everywhere. And this is for almost uh, three and a half months. And I think the biggest challenge is, was to protect one million family who were living from the tourism industry either directly or indirectly. This is the biggest challenge that we had. And I think we did it in a perfect way. And we were able to resume tourism 1st of July, 2022. And then we had a very successful touristic season until uh, when the war in Ukraine uh, started. Uh, Ukraine and Russia represent more than 40% of inbound tourism to Egypt. So it was a very big hit. And the biggest challenge that I got at the beginning of this war was the 17,000 Ukrainian tourists who were in Egypt at that time without any flights to get them back home or even the surrounding country. Uh, their credit card was not working. And this is uh, another very important decision that uh, in the Egyptian side, we covered the full accommodation of the 17,000 Ukrainian tourists and their flight back home to Europe. This is something that uh, we had to do it because it was a, a crisis. And we managed in the Egyptian government, I think, this crisis in a very human way. And this is very important. And the result that uh, starting from mid-2022, we have a very good uh, touristic seasons until today and 2023 we reached almost 15 million tourists, which is a, a very high number uh, for us. It's almost remind our numbers before the revolution in 2010. Many days because uh, the day I uh, got my only son, uh, Omar, he is 19 years old and he's uh, studying uh, communication and information, okay. and he's playing uh, water pool. Uh, this is a very special day in my life. Uh, the day of my wedding, of course, and the day uh, I got my PhD, uh, because it was uh, years and years of work. So I was very happy to obtain my PhD. This is a few days among others, of course. Ahora, ¿qué cualidad, ¿qué cualidad le interesa o le gusta más de las personas que trabajan o aprecia más, que trabajan con él y obviamente ya de, de forma personal? Of course, to be honest mm -hmm. and uh, for people who value the human contact, this is very, very uh, important. Uh, rich people 
from whom I can learn. This is something uh, uh, make I like deep persons uh, who have uh, a reason for their life. And you can understand that uh, when I decided to do Egyptology in the beginning of my career, uh, I followed my passion. And this is, I love the people who follow their passion, who are doing what they believe in. The people who can decide their lives. Ya para finalizar, como candidato a la dirección de la UNESCO, ¿cuáles son las principales metas y visiones para fortalecer la cooperación cultural y la protección, eh, obviamente, del patrimonio mundial. In my vision for UNESCO, I dream uh, of a UNESCO for the people. A UNESCO that the people on Earth, all the people, with all their cultures, religions, colors, uh, gender, are respected and they will be the priority. A UNESCO that is uh, appreciated by all people, and I want that everyone on earth feel and know UNESCO. So uh, one of the most important pillars of the campaign will be the approach of peace and the, the respect of human rights to help the countries to end advance the SDGs. The pillar, many pillars of my campaign, we are drafting now our vision uh, concerning the governance, concerning the education, to uh, give quality education for all, uh, especially for girls and for the vulnerable in uh, natural disaster zones or conflict uh, uh, zones work uh, on the training of the teachers, encourage the inf investment mm -hmm. for education, science to reduce the divide between the different nations and to use in a best way, in an ethical way, uh, the new technology, especially the uh, artificial intelligence, to work globally to preserve our planet, our rich biodiversity, our oceans, uh, to have clear water management uh, plans, uh, to reduce the impact of climate change, especially for uh, vulnerable countries and the seeds, uh, to raise awareness among the population of the impact of climate change, to uh, make more resilient populations and communities, to work on the cultural heritage preservation, to help countries to inscribe more sites on the World Heritage List, to make all people know their own intangible heritage, to register it and to make the whole people, the whole uh, population on Earth uh, recognize this intangible heritage, to encourage the industrial, sorry, the artistic uh, and creative industries, to protect the artists, mm -hmm. especially during uh, crises like COVID, uh, like conflicts, uh, to protect the journalists, and to work on a reliable and free uh, freedom of expression and the accurate information to reach everyone, to support the vulnerable, mainly uh, women on Earth, uh, priorities like Africa, the youth, the sports, uh, the, the displaced people because of natural disaster or conflict. UNESCO, it's a very wide scope. That's why we need the whole planet to work all together to establish peace and to bring people together for a better tomorrow for our children. صديقاتي وأصدقائي شعب المكسيك العظيم نحن دبعد جغرافيا جدا عن بعض يمكن فرق التوقيت حاليا هو تسعة ساعات مسافة زمنية ورحلة طويلة 
ولكن نحن متقاربين جدا ثقافيا لأن شعبنا أصحاب حضرتين عظيمتين أثروا في البشرية منذ أن وطأت قدمي بلدكم الجميل أشعر وكأنني في مصر ثقافيا وحضريا ومقابلة رائعة من الجميع وحتى الوجوه هناك تشابه كبير كل تمنياتي بالرخاء والسلام ومستقبل باهر لكل الأطفال وغدا أفضل للمكسيك والمصر ولكل البشرية Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. Le deseo todo el éxito, que le vaya muy bien y ojalá y si lo podamos tener en la unión. Un amable el jugador va a tener en París. Y hacemos la siguiente entrevista en París. Por supuesto, desde hoy la agendamos.